How's it going, people? Now, before I start yapping a lot of information to you, I would like to thank you guys in the comments for being so supportive and inspiring. I love the energy of this community that we are building. Welcome to the new subscribers. Some people might find this video to be very controversial, so that's why I have to add some kind of disclaimer. Everything that I am about to say in this video is just my own opinion. I am not trying to impose any ideas into anybody's beliefs. I am not against religious beliefs. I believe there is truth in all religions and that is why I study them. Anyway, with all that being said, I want to start this video with a comment about the Bluebeam project videos that I've been making. And it is this part where I said that governments of the world will start creating catastrophes and blame them on the aliens. So far, they have not blamed anything on the aliens, maybe because we still have to wait for this alien invasion thing to cook a little more. For this, they would be using a some kind of laser beam weapon technology. Simply because we humans have been indoctrinated into thinking that lasers and energy weapons are alien. Surprise, we got the wildfires in Maui, Hawaii. The most selective wildfire in human history. There is a lot of information of what caused this selective wildfire and it turns out that it was a direct energy weapon fired by airplanes and not by a satellite orbiting in space like the way I thought it was going to be. This is because apparently there is no such thing as space, or at least not in the way that NASA, CGI, Hollywood movies, and mainstream media made us believe. And that is one of the subjects that I will be talking about in this video. Today, we are talking about the Flat Earth Theory. Well, there is one thing that ancient civilizations always talk about and I could never wrap that around my head. It's until now that I opened my mind to a lot of things to understand where I was going wrong and now I admit it. Well, ancient civilizations talk about Earth being flat. You start if, Before you start thinking that I'm actually going crazy and now I'm a flat earther and that I think the Earth is flat, no. Now, this thing about the flat earthers and uh, this new conspiracy theory that's emerging, it's not about the planet being flat. It's not about the universe being flat. It's just about the space that we humans inhabit. This little space of land that we humans inhabit is straight enough to be perceived as flat. But that doesn't mean planets are flat or that the universe is flat. It doesn't mean that. So if we understand uh, ancient civilizations, we would understand that they were way more advanced than we are right now. And they have things like anti-gravity vehicles, brain hemisphere uh, transplants. Their societies were completely at peace. And for those people who still think that civilizations that we refer to as the Mayans, for example, uh, used to have uh, like human sacrifice and all this and all that. Okay, there's not one representation, whether from uh, carvings or uh, ancient scripts, not one representation of a human sacrifice. That was another lie being spread by the Inquisitors. So it was the actual church that brought the human sacrifice concept when they invaded uh, America. But anyway, right now we are talking about the earth being flat according to uh, ancient civilizations. Now, this one thing, uh, ancient civilizations uh, never talk about uh, planets or universe being flat. This is a little bit confusing. When we talk about Earth and when we talk about planets, that's a very different thing. Now, let's refer to Earth as a little portion of land that we humans inhabit. So Earth is just a small portion of a huge planet that we inhabit. There is a lot of evidence to support the theory that the planet is a lot bigger than we thought or a lot bigger than we were indoctrinated to think. And it is only natural that a giant Earth will have giant inhabitants. We can find evidence of these giants in the Bible, for example, with the Nephilim. In the Greek mythology, we have the Titans. We gotta remember that back in the day, the Greeks did not consider these mythologies. It was their religion and their way of life. It's just the same way that today we have the Bible. The giant dragon-like serpents from ancient China and Japan. The Sumerians also have their fair share of giants. For example, King Gilgamesh from Uruk was a giant. The Egyptians also have giants. Latin America also have mentions of giants. For example, the story of Moctezuma who slayed a giant that was terrorizing his village. But my favorite evidence of our planet being way bigger than we were indoctrinated to think are these supposedly natural rock formations that look like the base of a giant tree. The giant trees of life mentioned in pretty much every single ancient culture. I do believe from my heart that these are cut down giant trees. Who cut them down, I don't know, but I do feel that the ancient wars between gods had to do with it. So it is very possible that we only inhabit a small portion of this huge planet. Maybe this is why our Earth is perceived as flat. 
A very important thing to keep in mind as well is that very old ancient civilizations like the Mayans and the Sumerians have mentions of the times when the gods roamed the earth, times before there were stars in the sky. This is a part that never actually made sense to me. And I used to think that maybe ancient civilizations were just trying to explain the origins of the universe. But that wouldn't make sense either because they're very specific on what they are talking about. And they only talk about Earth, this space that we inhabit, that they describe literally as a flat circular disk. So what are the stars? According to ancient civilizations, stars and planets are just places where the gods come from. They were well aware of stars and planets and they never describe them as worlds hundreds of light years away from ours. This idea of the cosmos and space and galaxies and stars was just introduced to humanity less than a hundred years ago by none other than NASA. It is a very well known fact that they lied about the moon landing. There's more evidence to support the fact that they never actually landed on the moon than evidence to support the theory that they actually landed on the moon. They've been caught photoshopping their pictures and faking their sets claiming to be out in space why should we trust them on anything they say? If they lied about everything else, why would they not be lying about the idea of space? So what are these stars and planets and constellations that we can clearly see at night? Nobody knows for sure. People have crazy theories about this, like them being electromagnetic reflections of our dome. But to be honest with you, I don't understand how that works. So let me share with you my own theory that is easier to understand and it is based out of what ancient civilizations tell us about these bodies. To put it in small words, they are portals or doorways for in and out of our world. And they are not a million light years away from here. They're actually just right there where you see them. This is why we can have things such as the times of the gods before there were stars in the sky, 800 stars mysteriously vanishing over a period of 70 years. And yes, this happened. You can do your own research on that. And the Bible as well has mentions in the apocalypse of stars falling from the sky. And don't worry, the apocalypse doesn't mean destruction, it only means the lifting of the veil. So if you are in the path of truth, you'll have a good time. As well, ancient civilizations aligned their temples with a certain star, or constellation, or planet. In my opinion, this is because the temples work as a gateway, so you didn't actually have to have some kind of spaceship to be able to travel through these portals. You only had to have a high enough consciousness to be able to build a temple in a specific part of the world where energy concentrates the most. This is why these temples are always built in very energetic places in the world. Now let's talk about the dome part of this theory. The flat earth theory also suggests that these flat space of land that we inhabit is being contained by a non-physical dome-like structure. To be honest with you, I don't understand how that works or what kind of technology that could be. However, I found evidence to support this dome part of the theory in the Bible and in the book of Enoch. But let's start with the Bible first. Isaiah 40:22. It is he who sits above the circle of the earth. Notice how he described the earth as a circle. In newer English versions of the Bible, the word circle in this verse is replaced with the word globe. This word was changed to fit the modern narrative better. We have to remember that the Bible has been strongly modified about 18 times if I remember correctly. However, right now we are not looking for more evidence on our earth being a flat space, but we are looking for evidence on the dome part of the theory. In the older Spanish versions of this verse, it literally says that it is he who sits on top of the dome of the earth. And in newer Spanish versions of the Bible, the word dome is replaced with the word circle, just like in the English version. Let's talk about the book of Enoch now. When Enoch is taken by the angels, he literally describes the end of the earth, a place beyond the sun, the moon, and the stars. This fits very well with the narrative of the dome part of the flat earth theory, with the celestial bodies just being part of the dome and not actually standing thousands upon thousands of light years away from us. Another common question about the flat earth theory is what is Antarctica? Antarctica is the limit of the dome. Just like in the modern narrative of the uh, shape of our planet, if you travel on a straight line for a period of time, eventually you will get to Antarctica. So what happens when you cross the limit 
limits of the earth? According to the testimony of Admiral Richard Byrd, you get to lands beyond our imagination. I do recommend that you research the testimony of Admiral Richard Byrd. It is fascinating. Thank you so much for watching this video, I do really appreciate it. And I will appreciate even more if you subscribe to the channel and hit the like button. So you can stay tuned for my next video where I will be talking about on who is the owner of this earth, the ruler of the dome, according to ancient civilizations. And I'll give you a hint, it is not the Illuminati. Have an amazing awakening journey, take really good care, and I'm out.